Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be making a very energetic reaction which can be used in place of several various other reactions um, and it's a lot cheaper. Now, I, in a previous video I showed how to make that kind of sort of flash powder with um, aluminum and potassium nitrate, however it's not um, a true flash powder because it reacts rather slowly. Now this, does, this uh, mixture reacts even slower but um, it's much more economically viable and faster to produce as um, aluminum powder can take very long time to produce and um, for that it's not really worth your time to waste at all. However on the other hand this charcoal powder here um, can be very easily produced and I do plan on making a video exactly on how to make charcoal powder such as that. Um, and it's not just grinding up charcoal because we need to make it so it never touches oxygen while it's getting charred. And I'll show you how to do that in a future video. But um, today we're also going to be reacting that with potassium nitrate. Now I don't have the potassium nitrate out, but we made that in a separate video from potassium chloride and uh, instant cold packs. So you can go check that out. So the reaction that we'll be doing today is simply potassium nitrate plus carbon, which gives potassium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen gas. Now potassium carbonate can in turn be used to make potassium hydroxide which I also show in a future video so the byproduct of this reaction is actually useful so I will be saving the potassium carbonate produced by this because it is useful of course um, and in turn the potassium hydroxide will be used to uh, make potassium metal um, so anyhow basically here I went through all the stoichiometry, stoichiometry and um, found out that for every gram of carbon we have, we need about 6.73 grams of potassium nitrate. Now, of course, charcoal is not pure carbon, and um, for this reason we'll be using a slight excess of carbon, just so that any impurities which are in this charcoal um, will make up for the fact that we don't have pure carbon. So, I'll get, up the, uh, get out the uh, potassium nitrate, and um, mix up a ratio of the two um, in a fairly perfect ratio. And I'll meet you back and tell you exactly how much I had. Okay, so I uh, simply measured out um, about 7 grams of charcoal powder and approximately 45 grams um, of our potassium nitrate. And this means that we have about 50 grams of uh, the thermite, or no, sorry, not the thermite, but the reaction mixture here. So uh, we'll just be setting it off in this uh, steel crucible here. So um, now, of course, my main reason to do this is, of course, to get the potassium carbonate, because this is probably the most economically viable method. I did show a separate video on how to get potassium carbonate from... Um, cream of tartar uh, through thermal decomposition of that. However, it's not very efficient and I can almost guarantee that this way will be extremely much more efficient compared to that. And um, so what we'll now do is simply go outside and take this fine powder which has been ground up. Oh, make sure to use a blender that's only for science. Um, um, we'll take this and set it on fire with a blowtorch. And um, it should burn very, very vigorously and produce carbon dioxide gas, nitrogen gas, and leave us with our product of potassium carbonate, which can be just dissolved into a solution to purify and filter it off and then boil down your solution. And uh, the potassium carbonate is going to be used for a slew of other chemical reactions in the future. And um, if you don't want potassium carbonate, of course, this is just a very cool reaction. So go set it up outside and show you exactly what it looks like. Okay, so it's really dark out and you're not going to be able to see it till I light it, but I just put it in the tin can and it's out there. And I'm going to get my sister to light it, so uh, go ahead and light it. So uh, you just need a blowtorch or something, and you can see a very vigorous reaction is happening. Lots of sparks, lots of flames, a vigorous amount of popping is also occurring, and we just produced a bunch of potassium carbonate. You can see it's a very energetic reaction, produced lots of smoke, and a very hot tin can. And uh, so we'll take this inside and recover the potassium carbonate from it. Very cool reaction. Okay, so as you can see, we're back inside, and um, here is our product of what we've obtained. Now, um... My camera will focus, but uh, yeah, there we go. You can see that it's uh, actually like a kind of glassy color. This uh, most likely has lots of pota um, potassium nitrate contamination because charcoal, of course, is impure. So there's lots of impurities um, which never reacted with potassium nitrate, which means we have an excess of potassium nitrate. However, I do believe we should be able to remove this. Now, of course, if you wanted to make this simpler, and I didn't think of this, you could simply just add another 10, 20 grams of um, carbon powder, uh, or charcoal, and um, whatever doesn't react can simply be filtered off because uh, charcoal slash carbon is insoluble in water. However, potassium nitrate and both potassium carbonate are both soluble in water, so it'll be a bit of a pain in the butt to separate them, but it shouldn't be too hard. So we'll start by uh, emptying as much of this as possible into a container, and then just put some water in it to start dissolving everything. Okay, so as you can see, we just added a bunch of water to our um, potassium carbonate, which was impure. 
and um, dissolved everything, then transferred it to the small beaker. Now, whatever wasn't soluble, you can see, is sank to the bottom pretty quickly, and uh, to get rid of it, we'll just simply filter it off, and hopefully we'll be left with a fairly clear solution. We'll see. So we'll just dump that into the filter, and I'll meet you back when it's done filtering. Uh, so yeah, just make sure you filter it. Okay, so after filtering, you can see that we're left with a relatively clear solution, so that means that there's not too much contamination. Now, there might be a bit of contamination, but for our purposes, we're, it's not going to need to be exceptionally pure, because we're just going to be um, converting this to potassium hydroxide, which will be very pure. Um, so, basically, or well, we might use potassium carbonate for something else, but uh, my main use is to turn it to the hydroxide. So now all we have to do is take the solution and boil it down to ob obtain our pure potassium carbonate. So that's what I'll do, and I'll meet you back. Okay, so as you can see, we have um, nicely boiled this whole solution down, and we're left with some nice white potassium carbonate. And this actually looks quite pure, so it could be used for most applications. Now, we are going to, of course, convert this to potassium hydroxide in the future, and I already have some videos um, and part of that editing uh, put together, so those should be coming out soon. Now, an interesting thing, as soon as um, it was done boiling down, because potassium carbonate actually liquefies itself, um, if it absorbs enough water from the air. It's that hygroscopic. So you have to make sure it doesn't absorb a lot of water from the air. So to do that, as soon as it was done heating up, I simply put some saran wrap over it. And as you can see, it formed this bowl as it got sucked in as it was cooled. So that was kind of cool. So we just need to open this up now, now that it's nice and cool, crush it all up into a powder, and quickly put it into an airtight container for storage. And um, I don't believe we have a huge amount, so I'll just put it in this container. And then I'll meet you back. I tried to break up as much as possible, but of course there's still going to be some left in here that I just couldn't get off. It is very stuck to the glass, but that's okay, you just have to put some water in there to dissolve it, and then you'll be able to clean the glassware because it'll just dissolve right off. So uh, here's our final amount of potassium, car uh, yeah, potassium carbonate which was formed, and it is important to note that you could actually form potassium carbonate several other ways. In a previous video I showed how to make it from potassium bitartrate, which is cream of tartar, and um, that worked very well, but um, you could also just do the reaction of potassium nitrate and sugar, and also potassium nitrate and carbon as shown here. So all of those will give you the potassium nitrate, and um, this can be heated up really, really, really hot to form potassium oxide, and then hydrolyzed to form potassium hydroxide, or simply take this and react it with calcium hydroxide, that will also form potassium hydroxide. plan to show all of these in future videos, and um, we just really need potassium hydroxide, so I'm trying to show as many ways as possible. And in my opinion, this is much superior over the other method of producing potassium carbonate, just because um, it's so much easier to do, and potassium nitrate um, is not very difficult to make, or buy if you're in the US. I'm not in the US, so I have to make it from cold packs, and I do show how to do that in a separate video. So let's quickly see how much we have, so I'll turn on my extremely dirty scale here, and zero out a container, which is the exact same, and now we'll put on this, and whatever it weighs is, of course, the difference. So, then we have 8 grams of potassium carbonate, so that's what we were left with. This is a very good yield. Um, and that's wonderful, 8 grams of potassium carbonate is going to be plenty to do all sorts of reactions with. Now, of course, I didn't use a whole lot of potassium nitrate, um, because I didn't want to use a whole lot, and I don't really necessarily need a whole lot, because the only reason I need to make, um, this stuff is actually to make, uh, potassium fluoride for the extraction of fluorine, hopefully. Um, I have a whole process, la uh, worked out in my head. Anyhow, if you, of course, if you want to make, um, larger amounts of potassium carbonate, just scale up this reaction. And you get a very, um, very interesting reaction in the process, which is very satisfying. So, uh, it's very cool to do that, too. Anyhow, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you in future videos. Wait, bye.